Okay, a miscellaneous one about uh, steam table questions. Two two part question. How do you derive latent heat effusion of water, 970 BT per pound, from the reference handbook given five pounds of water vapor released in the air? Um, so I think we're, there's a little bit of confusion of terms here. Um, this 970 BT per pound is not the latent heat effusion, that's the latent heat of vaporization. So this would be like HFG from the steam table. So that's the latent heat of vaporization. Latent heat effusion is, um, is the amount of heat that needs to be added to melt ice or the amount of heat that's, uh, that's given up as, or that, I guess that's removed to freeze water into ice would be another way to think about it. Melting, freezing, being opposite sides of the same coin, but it's it's an examination of the phase change between a solid and a liquid. That's the latent heat of fusion, whereas the latent heat of vaporization is the energy to change from a liquid to a vapor or from a vapor back to a liquid. So if you take a look at um, section seven point five, thermodynamic properties of water at saturation. You'll find a table there, and um, I, I was trying to find out what is the latent heat effusion since you brought it up for water. Uh, it, it's in the mechanical engineering uh, reference manual, but it's not in the reference handbook, or at least not directly. This is the closest I was able to get to it. You can kind of figure it out. I have apologies for not including the column headers here, but this is HF, HFG, and HG. And uh, when you get down to 32 degrees in the table, you'll notice that for um, liquid water at 32, it's 143, well, negative 143.35. And then it says transition from saturated solid to saturated liquid. Difference in enthalpy HF between these two states is referred to as the latent heat of fusion. So basically what's happening is this is this would be liquid water and this would be ice right because it's colder as you go up so it's the difference between the two basically uh everything shown above this line for higher temp uh, lower temperatures colder temperatures is ice and then as you go from 32 and solid to 32 and liquid the only thing that changes is um is the latent heat effusion so the difference between those two numbers is about 143.4. I'm rounding a bit. And then I just checked that on Google Engineering Toolbox. I got 144 BTUs per pound there. And that's the same number that's in the, the MERM. So that is the latent heat of fusion for water. You can memorize it. You can remember it's in this table. Um, but you won't be able to look it up directly. Like if you just Google, I'm sorry, if you just control F reference handbook latent heat diffusion, it's gonna bring you back to this table and you're gonna to have to remember that it's the difference between these two numbers. And then the second question, uh, previously I asked about lean heat of vaporization of water. Is it really just P ATM at 14.7 and then look up HFG and steam tables and it's 970? Yes, that is HFG. That is the latent heat of vaporization for, um, steam at atmospheric pressure. And I think just kind of zooming out a bit on your question, a good way to remember all of this is to think about, this is something that I learned in like high school chemistry that just stuck with me through the years and maybe it'll be helpful to some of you. It's kind of like a staircase. If you take, um, kind of make a, a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. And let's suppose we put temperature on the vertical and enthalpy on the horizontal and we start with ice. And now imagine this is ice that uh, hasn't just frozen, it's like ice that's in your freezer, so it's zero degrees in there. So it's a solid and it's way colder than the freezing point. And we start adding heat to it, right? We start adding heat, we're increasing its enthalpy, what's happening? It's still solid ice. It's not even beginning to melt yet. It's just increasing in temperature as it goes from zero degrees 
to, uh, let's say, 32 degrees freezing point. And that's just sensible heating of solid ice. And then we go from there, we start melting at 32. And then we get to the point where it's completely melted and it's liquid water. And now we get sensible heating of liquid water. And then what starts happening when we get to 212, we boil. But when we boil, the temperature doesn't change until it's all completely changed to steam. And then we get the sensible heating of steam. So now if I label these, and let's call these processes one, two, three, four, and five. What are these processes? Process one is sensible heating of a solid, which is ice. Process two is melting. And if we were going the other direction, obviously it'd be freezing, right? Process three is sensible heating of a liquid. Four is evaporation or boiling. How would you like to think about that? And five is sensible heating of a vapor, steam. And what you'll notice about processes one, three, and five, they're all increasing in temperature. So they're all, they're all sensible heating and they're all governed by an equation that has the format of Q dot, or maybe just Q, skip the dot, MCP delta T, where CP is the specific heat capacity of ice, the specific heat capacity of water, or the specific heat capacity of steam, which are obviously all different numbers that you go look up. But since they're all sensible heating, they all follow the same formula. On the other hand, two and four are governed by Q equals MHF, latent heat diffusion for melting and freezing. And boiling is governed by Q equals MHFG, latent heat of vaporization, because we're evaporating as we go through process four. And just to put a pretty bow on top of all of that, if you think about enthalpy, you can say HF plus HFG equals HG, which we know from the steam tables. Um, or sometimes you think about it as the difference. HFG is the difference between HG and HF. And can you have an enthalpy that's even higher than HG? Absolutely. If it's not saturated steam, it has an enthalpy that's um, that's above Hg, and we look in the superheated steam table instead of the saturated steam table. So hopefully that's helpful. It's just a bit of review there, but uh, you know maybe just another kind of mental model to have in your brain. What was number two? Number two is melting or freezing if you're going the other direction, and it's the it's the mass of water times the latent heat diffusion. Make sense?